Introducing Bill Dance of Memphis, Tennessee, bass angler extraordinary. He was the first superstar of professional bass fishing, winning seven titles in the first 16 tournaments and far out distancing all the other anglers in total tournament points. He's been bass angler of the year, more often than any other man. Last year, he was runner-up in the Miller High Life Bassmasters Classic, the top tournament in the bass angler's world, a prize that so far has eluded all the top bass professionals. Right now, he's about uh, 21 or 2 pounds from the lead. Are you ready? Oh, not quite. 18 pounds, 12 ounces. It was that close, and a big bass he lost that final afternoon would have given him the cup. He was named Bass Angler of the Year again this year. I'm grateful. I'm deeply grateful to the great people in the Bass Angler Sports and Society who conduct these fine tournaments, to people like yourselves who compete in these tournaments, and to the people who write about these tournaments. And most of all, I'm grateful to my wife, Diane, who I love and she loves me and lets me fish. Thank you very, very much. All the qualifying anglers and a group of outdoor riders were flown by charter jet from New Orleans to a mystery lake for the 1974 Miller High Life Bassmasters Classic. This is Bill's story of that competition. For me, these tournaments are warm and wonderful gatherings of old friends. And the classic is the one that brings all the old timers together. The lake is Alabama's Joe Wheeler, one of the early impoundments of the TVA system. 64,000 acres with lots of shallow bays and bars. Cottages, piers, and boathouses line the shores. This is a lake that's seen a lot of fishing over a long, long time. Just how far bass fishing has developed in recent years is shown by the sophisticated equipment we use now. For this year's Miller High Life Bassmaster Classic, each of the top 29 qualifying contestants will have identical equipment. You'll have a good 16-foot bass boat made of fiberglass, unsinkable, and equipped with all the latest safety features. You'll have an 85-horse outboard that tilts for shallow water and trims for top performance. You'll have a depth finder to tell him instantly the depth of the water and something about the cover of the bottom. You'll have an oxygen meter to give him the dissolved oxygen content of the water at any depth. He'll have an electric trolling motor that lets him maneuver the boat at the touch of a toe. and an electric anchor that drops and comes up under a foot control, leaving hands free for fishing. And finally, he'll have an oaky bug aerator in the live well to keep his bass alive and kicking until they're weighed in and released for someone else to catch. All fish must be caught by casting with artificial lures, and each contestant is allowed to bring only 10 pounds of tackle to fish with. Now, my lures of importance are, of course, uh, good color selection of plastic worm and links, as well as a good selection of spinner baits, as well as crank type baits that run deep and crank type baits that run shallow. And a good selection of swimming baits and if the fish are Hitting on top, a good selection of topwater baits. And of course, a lot of old friends that have been dynamite on special occasions. We have one practice day before the three-day tournament begins, and the reports aren't very encouraging. Well, I don't think it's gonna take very much. I don't know, I sure didn't have any luck today at all. I think it'd be a tough tournament. Well, what are you gonna do? I don't know how I'm going to do it. It's pretty tough. Because today should have been a good day of fishing. 
I caught a few small ones, but not too many. I caught one keeping fish, and he's very happy with 10 pounds a day. Everybody stay on line with the base boat. At daybreak of the first tournament day, we line up and ready for the gun. The 29 best bass fishermen in the world are often racing to their chosen spots to determine. In this $15,000 winner-take-all competition, which one, at this particular time and place, can catch the greatest number of pounds of legal bass, with a bonus for bringing them in alive? Right from the start, the tournament angler knows he has no time to waste. He measures the minutes it takes to travel far against the extra fishing time to be gained close by. Most of all, he wants a place by himself. A good fishing area he can find and keep secret. Schools of fish he can work over without competition. The fishing begins. The lures go out to search the shallow water hiding places along the shore. They're cast to the sunken logs and weed cover and to the shallow flats. An angler looks for bass beneath an old boathouse. One angler may speed right through under many bridges, while another, like Dave Hilton of Dyersburg, Tennessee, thinks the best fishing is likely to be right under the bridge and brings in a small bass to prove they're there. Riders right, the fishermen fish. Tom Mann of Ufall, Alabama, one of the bass angling greats, brings in a small fish. Glenn Wells of Greenbrier, Tennessee, a longtime campaigner on the tournament trail, changes lures, typically by switching rods, to save precious fishing time. A fairly good bass responds to a spinnerbait cast by Al Lindner of Brandon, Minnesota. Contour maps and depth finders are the basic tools of Roland Martin, a good friend and a great angler who, like me, has yet to win one of these classic tournaments. Ricky Green of Arkadelphia, Arkansas, another top contender, finds a good large mouth out on the shallow flats. Bobby Murray of Hot Springs, Arkansas, winner of the 1970 Classic, brings in another good one. Bobby Metter of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, continues to work the shoreline and finds some good action. This one's a good smallmouth. These contestants waste no time. They fish every minute possible. They eat their lunches while they travel from one location to another, or while they study maps to search out another likely spot. Two fine largemouth bass, only minutes apart, give Roland Martin the most exciting moment of the first fishing day. Western shorelines fall into shadow. Tommy Martin of Hemp Hill, Texas, finds some productive water. And I, Bill Dance, well, I just couldn't find the right water or the right lure and ended up with three small fish. I see, Ralph. You got uh, four little fish. Tear them up. Bill Dance, how many pounds you kick? <laughs> I crashed and burned. <laughs> Three pounds and nine ounces for Bill Dance, Memphis, Tennessee. Bill, it was our national pump leader this year. Almost all the fish come in alive and stay healthy in special tanks for later release. Well, it's a classic one of Bobby Murray from Hot Springs, Arkansas, and he has a bunch of bass. I don't know how many he got there. Seven bass, eight pounds, four ounces. Oh, it was slow. 
off with the honors and leads the first day. Then it's time to relax, if you can, before the writers, who are also the contest judges, take over with their interviewing. And I went into the second one and today, and I never had a strike. And I did catch one there yesterday. How many did you catch all together, Ricky? Caught 11. Uh, Bill, did you have on any other good fish today? Yeah, I lost one real good fish. Uh, fish probably four and a half, five pounds. Had him in the top. Just tore down and tore out. And uh, lost out. two other fish. Uh, roughly a pound, a pound and a half. Figured if I had those three fish that I lost, it might have made a difference of uh, six or seven pounds. So I think everybody uh, threw their best fish today. Uh, and they went to the best area they you know, knew. And I think tomorrow that, uh, yeah, I think it'll be tougher. The day's leaders are Roland Martin, Ricky Green, Bobby Metter, Russell Cook, and Roger Moore. second day, we all know this is a critical time. We have to find the kind of water the fish are in and the lures that will catch them. If we can't get within striking distance of the tournament leaders before this fishing day is over, we'll be completely out of the running. Every waking moment since yesterday's weigh-in, we've been concentrating on what we did wrong and how to do it right. Each of us has a special place in mind, and many of us travel a long, long way up the lake to find a good spot, away from the competition. Some of us seek bass in the shadows of the eastern shorelines. Others, like Tommy Martin, head straight for the opening sunlit waters. Roger Moore of Springfield, Illinois, fishes slow and easy, further offshore and deeper than usual where the waters are clear. Metter's first fish comes from the cloudy waters of the shallows barely making the 12 inch limit. Roger Moore gives this one a long, long look, but doesn't bother to measure it. Most of his fish, though, 
are well over legal size. Bobby Metter keeps right on working the shoreline and catches fish. Ricky Green, yesterday's runner-up, ends the day with only a few small bass. And quitting time finds me thoroughly discouraged. Still looking for the right spot and the right lure, for the right pattern of fishing. For me, Joe Wheeler Lake is still a mystery. A lake where I can't find the kind of bass concentrations that give an angler a chance to make a killing, either deep or shallow. If there is any luck in angling, this is my unlucky day. Dana Wells had uh, only three pounds, six ounces yesterday, but you got to move a good bunch of bass today. I ain't right, touching you gotta move it. Yeah. Johnny, here's your ticket. Uh, Ricky Green, Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Two ounces out of the lead yesterday. That's two bass, two pounds, three ounces. Five pounds, four ounces for Bobby Metter. Bobby Ten pounds, six ounces. The bright star of this way in is Roger Moore, who managed to do what the rest of us were trying to do, come from behind and take a long, long lead. That's great. They look like they're all around the way they're kicking. You know who brought the fish ladies and gentlemen? Roger, get up there close to them. Let's take a look at them. Oh, those are pretty. Get them real close to the length and uh, make sure they're alive. Let's go. Don't let them get down the hole there now. <laughs> 13 pounds, 7 ounces, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give them a good hand. That's the largest catch of the tournament. Uh, you were fifth place yesterday. Now, you've got how much the total weight now? You calculate it? Uh, Close to 2215. Once it's calculated and the weights go up there, do you think if you were as much as six pounds in front, do you think you'd feel confident? I never feel confident. I mean, I'm going out tomorrow and figure that I got to catch another stringer. I got to get another limit tomorrow. A lot of ladies would mind your jumpsuit when you come up here, and they'd ask me to ask you, where did you buy that? I didn't. I made it myself. <laughs> well, the night when you lay there trying to go to sleep, you're going to be wondering what you were doing that they weren't doing. I mean, what do you mean sleep? I'm going to have about six beers and go to bed. <laughs> Just lay there. Oh, Miller. Miller's, yeah. Time to relax again, if you can. By this time, most of us have given up any hope of winning that cup and the $15,000 that go with it. The second day leaders are Roger Moore, Tommy Martin, Bobby Metter, Charlie Campbell, and Bobby Murray. Between moonset and sunrise, we gather on the third and final day. A few with high hopes. The rest of us going out in sheer desperation. Roger Moore is so far out in front that even a fair day's catch should let him win. And he starts right off with action. Charlie Campbell of Foresight, Missouri, now in fourth place, works under a bridge. But he just can't locate those schools of big bass he's been looking for.
Ricky Green, second highest tournament point winner for the year, seems now to have lost his magic, just as I have. A scrappy smallmouth hits a crankbait for Bobby Metter, now in third place, and gives him a ray of hope. Tommy Martin, second in the standings, fishes deep in the clear water, continuing the pattern he set up late the first day. Roger Moore's favorite fishing area suddenly goes blank, and he starts out to look for new fishing ground. Tommy Martin is still catching fish at the same drop-off where he caught them before, and his fish run large. Roger Moore just can't find those schools of good bass he clobbered the competition with yesterday. Cast after cast comes back without a strike. I missed a few good strikes and had one real solid fish on for a minute or two, but I have to admit, Joe Wheeler Lake has me buffalo. Deadline comes for the final weigh-in. This gives us a real beautiful largemouth bass. Look at that monster. And that's pretty big. Six pounds and 12 ounces. Tom Mann wins $100 a pound for the biggest fish of the day. Top four all-time winners. He won three nationals. Bobby Metter's consistently good catches give him a total of 24 pounds, 8 ounces, and that will give him third place. Roger Moore's total is 29 pounds, 1 ounce. 513. 15 or better. Tommy Martin's great catch gives him a total of 33 pounds, one ounce, and he wins the tournament. To present our sponsor, who's represented today, by one of their executives, John Hennessy of the Miller Brewing Company. John Hennessy. Thank you, Ray. Tommy, great victory, really great. From ninth, the first day, the second yesterday, and today, the 1974 Miller High Life champion. I'd like to present you this trophy, which I'm sure is going to look great down in Toledo Bend at your marina. I think this will look very good in the branch of your local bank. A check for $15,000, Tommy. Maybe we should turn that over to Dima. Somebody wins, somebody loses. Just how much winning depends upon skill and how much on luck in any one contest is something anglers will talk about forever. Well, Bill Dance, now that it's over, where do you think you went wrong? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, Ray, I really don't know. Uh, it's kind of hoping that uh, wherever we went, the classic site, that the fish might be in deep water. Of course, they were shallow here, and I guess my toughest tournaments are when fish are shallow. I want to fish deep, but uh, I fall back and listening to other fishermen talk about the patterns that they've established and the fish being shallow. Well, you know, I just switch back and forth. I never did establish a pattern. Well, Bill, let me ask you this. You know, it's a funny thing is that you and, and, and most of our really great fishermen never seem to be able to win the Classic in four years. What do you think the reason is that? Why, why is that? I, I can't give you an answer for it, but I do know this, that uh, every fisherman here is capable of winning. We recycle the bass we catch in these tournaments. We have our sport but we don't hurt the fishing of the future. 
Over 95% of the tournament's 291 fish go back into the lake safe and sound. The tournament's bass are back at home. And where is Bill Dance now? Out fishing, of course. Still wondering, perhaps, why he bombed out in the Joe Wheeler Classic. And figuring out a surefire plan for winning the next one. He'll be testing new lures and new tactics. He'll be seeking to add to his store of knowledge of this great game fish. He'll be wondering, too, how he can help others to love this sport as he does. How he can help them to understand it, enjoy it, and most important, protect its future. A man, if he's a good angler, can catch a great many bass. But if he's really civilized, he's going to be that rare thing, an unpraying predator. He's going to release the bulk of his catch, which makes his angling a game of skill that preserves rather than destroys or diminishes the source of his pleasure. <laughs> 